We always look forward to Steve Merrill dropping by, break down all the big college football games each and every week. So just not here on the Iowa channel, but go to all the team channels and you see all the breakdowns from Steve on the betting lines from coast to coast. Week 12, we've got Iowa, we've got Illinois. Here we go, Steve. Another example of Iowa's over under win uh, point total prowess in a game that uh, I think we talked about it having one of the lowest uh, point totals in recent memory at somewhere in the 28 and a half range against Rutgers. Iowa's defense took care of that with a shutout and a 22 nothing win. So under the point total again are the Hawkeyes. And they're a three and a half point favorite against Illinois this week. Yeah, I think that did close as the lowest over under in the history of college football. Because you got to <laughs> keep in mind, um, when I started, I started 27 seasons ago, 1996. I've been doing this 28 seasons, 27 years ago, my 28th college football season as a professional handicapper. Back in the 90s, um, they were not over unders on college football games. You would maybe get five a week. It'd be like the prime time, like 3.30 and 7 o'clock national TV games. And there were no totals on any other games. So we're only talking about over-unders in college football for like the last 20, 25 years. Um, and that was the lowest total ever. Closed as low as 27 and a half in some locations. So what do you do when you've gone under four straight totals of 34, 30, 31, and 27? Well, you bump it higher, right? Well, that's because Illinois is playing them. I and Illinois has actually gone over three straight games. And on the season, Illinois has given up 29 and a half per game, which is almost the total here. Um, Iowa, of course, only scoring 19 points. They give up only 12. So it's really however you think this game is going to play out. Illinois quarterback midweek is listed as questionable, so we'll keep an eye on that. You know, that also could play a part in the total uh, as we get closer to Saturday. Um, my database simulation, 10,000 games run through the database, has Iowa winning by 12 and a half. Now, my simulation has done that quite often this year. They've had them winning by, you know, six to seven points more than the spread. Um, but a few times that it's done that, it has been accurate. So at minus three, three and a half, I do like Iowa in this game based on some line value. And we're obviously getting the better defensive team as well at home, laying a short number. So not going to look at the total this week because I'm afraid about that Illinois defense might allow some more points than we've seen. But as I've talked about every week, historically, if you play the lowest totals under, whether it be the NBA, college football, any other sport, or the highest totals over, you make money. And that's been a textbook example with Iowa. We've seen four of the lowest totals in recent history, and all four have gone under the last four weeks. Um, so once again, under a pass on the total, but I think Iowa minus the three, three and a half actually might be the best play in this game. A few side notes on this one. Illinois and Iowa got together last year to combine for just 15 points in a 9-6 game. Illinois scored uh, with Indiana 93 total last week, 48-45. So a clash of the, you know, irresistible force and the immovable object type deal. Uh, as Steve mentioned, Iowa was just a one-point favorite against Rutgers last week and blew them out by 22. And then also consider that maybe Iowa's finding something on offense. So against a pretty good Rutgers defense, Steve, they gained 400 yards of total offense for the first time in two and a half years that they hit 400 yards of total offense, hit 200 yards passing last week. They hadn't done that, I don't think, the entire season uh, they are still last in the in the nation in total offense, and they are not only last in the nation in total offense after their explosive game that they had against Rutgers, but they have more of a gap between them and number 132 than any other two positions all the way up the ranks to number one. That's how horrendous they've been on offense, but they continue to win. They're marching toward a Big Ten championship game. If they win this game, they've locked it up in the West, so it's it's just a remarkable a uh, set of metrics there for Iowa. Well, you know, and Mark, too, you know, we talked about the OC, for instance, you know, finally being let go. You got to wonder if that's going to be a catalyst maybe to change something for the rest of the season. And also, last year, that game you referenced was midseason, like early October. It was a 9 6 loss for Iowa, um, but they only had 224 off 22 offensive yards, but Illinois had 316 yards of offense, which is more than just nine points, which suggests normally. Um, and that game, by the way, was 36 and a half and easily stayed under. Um, and as the season went on last year, Iowa went under four of their last five, including under 31 two different times. So it really has been fun to talk about Iowa. But you bring up a good point about last week's offensive like outburst, if we will. You know, Was that maybe the buy sign for both the Hawkeyes and some overs finally to start happening? Yeah, and also with the Illinois situation, actually with their backup quarterback in, he threw for 507 yards wow. last week against Indiana, and he came into he came in cold the week before in a must-win 
fourth and 11 situation and threw a dart uh, to, to complete the fourth and 11 and ended up three for three for 85 yards and a touchdown and threw the game winner. So he may be the good luck charm. He's a sixth year senior. Uh, Steve's under the radar selections. Of course, they're 19 and five and they're exclusive here at the voice of college football over on the main channel as a YouTube member. So for three bucks a month, you become a YouTube channel member and you get access to 19 and five against the spread. Uh, you don't need to be a finance major to figure it out. All right, Steve, we appreciate you stopping by.